Hey everyone, it's Colin Shadwell again with another teapot throwing tutorial on YouTube here. Uh, this is the third in my series of the six that I made um, the other day. Uh, for this one, I'm, I'm going to go for a, a triangular teapot. Now, I've made one of these before on a previous YouTube video that I called the, the beaker teapot, but it's a really wide base teapot that kind of comes up almost like a pyramid. Um, and I think it lends well to the idea of cutting tunnels in and trying different shapes in the previous ones I've done mostly just circles because my faces have been mostly circular so this is a chance for me to try some different shapes here so as you can see I'm, I'm spreading the clay out really wide I'm creating a really large base and as I'm pulling always pulling up towards the middle um, the key to this is if you if you let it flare on you if you let it get out wide it's gonna be impossible to kind of keep it narrow so I'm, I'm always kind of pulling it up kind of like toward the top of the mountain I kind of visualize as I'm throwing it here so um, I've got plenty of clay to work with and I'm what I've done here is I've wrapped a, uh, a chamois cloth around one of my tools to kind of give me a nice smooth angular edge I don't want to be a lot of bumps now again I can carve this later on to get the the exact shape that I want um, but for right now it's just a, a good starting point going through my usual putting my little indentation in for the um, for the lid that's going to go on later on and here I'm making that lid again the same process centering a small amount of clay pressing down uh, not in the middle, but off to the side a little bit, and it causes that middle part to raise while the other part flattens down. And then measuring with my calipers and cutting away the unused clay that I don't need. Again, more clay the better. If you have too much, uh, that's okay. Not enough is never okay on this. So just rechecking, measuring. And then for this one, I'm going to throw a very long spout off the hump here, which is really hard to do. This this process of throwing. Uh, a really tall spout. You have to be really slow with your wheel. You have to be really delicate because they want to twist on you. It's getting really thin. You can see that the, already the clay is twisting and I'm just trying to get it collared in, collared in, higher and higher as high as I can go. But you can see there it's already starting to twist. So I had to come back in here and try to compress and get some more clay back in that part. Using the rib tool kind of help compress that clay back in a little bit. But it's really tough to get clay this tall, a spout this long. But I managed to get one out. Again, over by the sink, plenty of water. Pulling this handle out as long as it'll go. I want a nice long handle for this one. So, um, a lot of times I'll put a decorative element on these handles too by uh, running my thumb down each side once and twice. You'll see I do it a couple times here, there, there, running it back and forth along the side there. It creates a little indentations on the side, makes the, the sides a bit thinner. So, for this one, I'm going to make a triangular tunnel. So, what I've done here is I've cut out some slabs, uh, two four inch slabs and one three inch slab. And I'm kind of just guesstimating the angles needed here, but I want to have a nice uh, uh, meeting points for all these. I want it to be a structurally sound one. So I'm going through and adding plenty of slipping scoring techniques here and then making a little uh, teepee, or not teepee, tent. A tent. I'm making a tent. Uh, so smoothing this out and then letting this dry to somewhat other hard. Now when I put this together, it was not pretty. I'll admit I should have let the, uh, the tent dry some more, but uh, I was kind of working late and wanted to go to bed but ended up not going to bed anyway so um, I'm just getting the general shape cut out here again I'm still trying to perfect this uh, of not cutting away too much but making it open wide enough that the, the piece can go through um, and I find it, once I feel like I get it, get it close enough then I'll go ahead and add some um, slip in there along with scoring it to kind of help seal it later on but also let it get through there so I really had to push this guy through I probably should have opened it up a bit more at the top but I'm trying to keep it close now on the other side, it's just kind of a guess. You know, you, you cut a little away, then you start cutting a little bit more until you can kind of get the general shape that'll allow it to pass through uh, without cutting too much away. Um, and this one, again, was not pretty. I really had to push on it more than I wanted to, but it's okay. I've made a lot more of the tent than I needed to, so I, I could cut away a lot uh, later on. So again, I'm, I'm forcing it through here, um, which, again, it, it distorted it a little bit on the end, but I was going to cut off all the end anyway, so it's fine. So just getting enough through so that I can I can have some that I can really overlap. So with these tunnels here, my new goal is to make sure that when I cut them off, that I kind of like smush the edges out here. You see I'm trying to cover that out. Instead of cutting out flush, smushing the edges over, really let those blend into the piece, and then I'll come back and smooth it out later on. So hopefully this technique will cause less cracking. But I get a nice tunnel through here eventually. This took a little more work than I was expecting. So I, I added the spout and the handle uh, off camera, and you can see here that the end piece is... It's pretty nice. Um, I still have a little more cleaning up to do on the edge. You can see some bumps and stuff like that, but a, a nice sponge once it dries out a bit more will be fine. But the, the handle turned out nice, and uh, you get a nice triangular tunnel that matches the outside of the edge as well. So 
overall, I like this piece, and I hope you enjoyed watching me make it.